Well, let me thank you for your prayers. I tell you, um, my arm is, is actually feeling better. But then again, this is Sunday. If I can be sick on Sunday and, and still preach and, and feel all right. So, but I, I know that God is doing a great work. I've got four more weeks and three more weeks in this cast. And then it's over. I have to start mopping the floor again, I guess. Uh, today, we, we have a wonderful opportunity today in the life of the church we're going to respond to a commandment of God. Uh, this was a commandment the Lord Jesus gave us when on the night that he was betrayed, he shared with his disciples what we know as the Last Supper, and he told us, told them, and now us, do this in remembrance of me. I'm gonna ask you to open your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians 11, and we're going to study what should we do during the Lord's Supper. I don't know if you ever thought about that. What should we be doing now, right now, in this moment, as we prepare for this table? Uh, I don't think it means that we should update our Instagram or however you do that kind of stuff. But um, there's a preparation for this service. It's not something to be entered into lightly. It's something that we should take very reverently. So what should we do during the Lord's Supper? We're going to see the symbolism of these elements that we're going to partake of in this very special service. So I'm going to ask you to once again stand with me as we read the Word of God. I'm going to begin reading in verse 23. And the word of God says, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he, said, Thank, and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be here together to share in this wonderful service. And Lord, I pray that we would prepare our hearts for this hour. God, that you would speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit through the power of your Holy Word. And God, I pray that you would open our eyes that we might behold wonderful truths out of your law. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name for his sake and glory. Amen. You may be seated. I believe there are three clear things that we should do as we prepare to take of the Lord's Supper. Uh, the very first thing is... We should look backwards. Uh, in our text, Jesus shared two elements with his disciples and the same two elements that we have here today before us. And both times the Lord said, as he gave them to him, to, the, to his disciples, he said, do this in remembrance of me. He makes that statement at the bread. He makes that statement after the cup. So this service is a reminder for us to look back at the earthly life of Jesus and the work that he did on Calvary's cross. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we, we celebrated uh, the Good Friday. Uh, that's the day that Jesus was crucified and uh, was placed on that brutal cross. And it is a day that we were bought with a price. Now, we, are be we have been asked by the Lord to take the time today to remember what the cost of our salvation really uh, did, what, what it cost. So both of these elements are significant, the bread and the cup. The bread is a picture of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we should remember his life. Think about the stories you've read in the Gospels. Think about what you have heard that he, he was able to accomplish, the healing, the love that he shared. All the teaching that, that Jesus did uh, in his earthly ministry. Think about the, the lepers that were healed, the lame that were healed, and, and lives that were changed. That's what we want to remember. See, the bread that we partake of is unleavened bread. 
That's another aspect of the Lord's life. He led a sinless life. Yeast, leaven, was a picture of sin. And so when we take of this bread, unleavened bread, it reminds us of his perfect life. And then we come to the cup. We remember his death because it is a reflection. It is a picture of the shedding of his blood as we take the cup. So not only did Jesus live a perfect life, he died a perfect death. He went to the cross first thing he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was the purpose of the cross. But all through that, that event, he took on my sin. And, and when he took on my sin, the father had to, had to turn his back. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? For the first time in all of eternity, the father and the son were, were not together. And we remember that he did that for us because the wages of sin is death. Death is separation from God. Jesus had to take that on for himself. So we should remember how he died. He died willingly. No man took his life. It wasn't the, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees. It wasn't the Roman government. Jesus laid his life down on that cross. He died meekly. He uttered not a word. He, he let everything happen to do the Father's will. And he showed his love there on that cross. He gave his body into the hands of these wicked men. And he bore on that body the sins of the world. He laid down his life for us on the cross. You know, the thought struck me this week preparing for today. We celebrate Christmas, the birth of the Lord, and it's a wonderful celebration. We love to do it, and I think it's wonderful. We celebrate Easter, and that's another great one. We love to see that come around because it reminds us of the resurrection. But you know, I can't find it in the Bible where it says we're to celebrate Christmas. Or Easter, we're not to celebrate his birth. Not that we're not supposed to, but it doesn't tell us to celebrate his birth. It doesn't tell us to celebrate his resurrection. We celebrate his resurrection every Sunday, amen? We come together on the Lord's day to remember that. But we are told to remember his death. This is what we're supposed to celebrate, his death. Because without the shedding of blood... There is no remission of sin. If Jesus didn't live that perfect life and then die that perfect death, there could be no salvation. So we remember today his vicarious death on the cross. And we shouldn't shy away from that. We shouldn't hold back from that. We should remember what he has done for us. We're commanded to celebrate it. Number two, so we look back. And then number two, we're to look forward. Look forward. When he administered this new covenant, he said we're to do this, um, to celebrate this till he comes, it says at the end of verse 26. So we're to remember that not only did Jesus come one time and then be resurrected and ascend into heaven, but he's coming again. And we're to celebrate this until he comes. The return of Jesus Christ is, a, is the blessed hope of the church. It's exactly what we as, as Christians are looking forward to. Jesus not only died for us, but he rose again and he ascended to heaven. And one day he's coming back. He's going to return to take us all to heaven. Today, we're not at all um, what we should be as, as Christians but John said in 1 John 3, 2, we, when we see him, we shall be like him. That's coming. That's why he's coming back again to take us to heaven. You know, in Mark chapter 14, when Mark uh, wrote down what Jesus did in that upper room, in that account, we hear Jesus say, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So this service that we are commanded to take part in is a reminder that Jesus is coming again. And when he has us all there in heaven together, we're going to celebrate this again with him. It's as if Jesus is saying, celebrate this between the time that I return to the Father and that I return for my church, and then we'll celebrate it.
together. And beloved, the, the return of Jesus is imminent. That means it could happen at any moment. It's one of the greatest promises in all the word of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 reminds us that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the last trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and shall be changed. We're going to take this body that deteriorates, that gets broken, that gets sick, and we're going to trade it in for one that never will see sickness or sorrow or death again. When that happens, we'll celebrate with Jesus at what's called the wedding feast of the Lamb. And until that time, we celebrate here together at this table and we remember his perfect life. We remember his vicarious death. So we're to look back. We're to look forward. Remember that he's coming again very soon. But there's a third look that I want us to really concentrate on this morning. And that's a look inward. We are to take a look inward. I think maybe this is the most important thing that we should be doing during this service, prior to this service. We should examine ourselves. We should take an inward look. In our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul goes on to say, beginning at verse 27, he says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But look at verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So Paul doesn't say that we have to be worthy to partake of this. We'd never be worthy. None of us are. But he said we should partake of it in a worthy manner. If we're to partake in, uh, participate in a worthy manner, we need to examine our hearts. We need to judge our own sin. We need to confess that sin to the Lord. In other words, take stock of your closeness to the Lord before you come to this table. You know, sometimes we call the Lord's Supper communion. I like that word. It's a good word. It's a word that means to commune. It means to fellowship. In fact, the word communication comes from the same root word. So I look at it this way. We're to make sure we have an open communication with the Lord. That means that we should confess our sin because God says, I will not hear you. Uh, Psalm 66, 18. If you regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear me. We need to take some time before the elements come to us and ask God to look into your heart and see if there's a sin that you have committed. And ask God as as he searches to reveal that so that you will be able to confess that. See, because Paul doesn't say, don't take this cup. In fact, he says, after the examination, that you should take of the bread and of the cup. Many of God's children are sickly and weak because we continue to live in sin. We haven't had that time where we just stop in our day. And take time. If you're not coming on uh, Sunday night, we're talking about Jonah. We're going to be in Jonah chapter 2. God got Jonah into a part of, uh, into a place where he could only talk to God. Don't wait for that. Don't wait to be in the belly of the fish. We need to stop. We got busy lives, don't we? we, 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 are, we we're going 25, 26, 27 hours a day. It, it just never stops. You need to take the time to stop. And that's what this service is about. We just stop. And we just ask God, is there any sin in my life? Is there something I need to confess? And we need to make it right with God because when we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us. We need repentance in the church. Repentance means a turning from sin. We need to see the sin of our life the way God sees it. We need to see how harmful unconfessed sin is in our lives, in our families, in our churches. So I encourage you to take time today to take an inventory, a spiritual inventory, and don't be discouraged by it. Use that conviction of the Holy Spirit to bring you to a place of repentance. 
You might find that you have something against somebody else and you need to make it right with them. Just commit to God to, to make sure before the, the night comes, before the sun goes down, that you're going to get in contact with them. You're going to make things right. But for this morning, for this service, let's get right with God. As we look back, as we see his perfect life, and as we see the cross, we know that we can come to him freely, openly, and we can be forgiven of all of our sin. As we see the resurrection, we see the new life that he has given to us. And as we look inward, we can see the sin and confess that to him. Get on good communicating ground with the Lord today. And we can also have that forward look. And remember, he's coming back real soon. And we need to come and um, be ready for that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we have this time of invitation, I pray that your people would have an inward look right now. And God, that they would, they would see sin the way that you see it, how harmful it is. And that we need to make confession of our sin every day. But Lord, so that we can participate worthily in this Lord's Supper, help us to bring about a time of, of true repentance, of turning from our sin, of seeing it your way and living our life your way. As we have this time of invitation, God, speak to these, your people, and I pray it in Jesus' name for his sake and glory. Amen.